So in today's video, I've got my full unbiased review of the new Callaway Rogue ST fairway wood. I'm gonna be testing the Rogue Max and the Max D fairway wood. So make sure you check out this video if you're considering purchasing a new fairway wood this year. So first up, is the Callaway Rogue ST Max fairway wood? Perhaps the one that Callaway are expecting to be their biggest seller. And I'm gonna also compare this to the Max D, the draw head. I actually haven't got the LS head here, which is the low spin one. So if you are a real high speed player with a really high flight, loads of spin, that may be the head you plump for. But let me test these first, because they already talk about low spin, even with these fairway woods themselves. Now, uh, there's a lot of claims. The biggest claim I read on their website is that this is 10 yards longer. It was testing it compared to the Epic Fairway Wood, so a previous model of the Callaway one here, and it was talking about 10 yards further. It talks about its lowest spinning Fairway Wood as well. Now, that is fine as long as we can produce enough peak height and get that ball coming into the ground at a reasonable descent angle, because we're not just going to use this off the tee. We're also going to be hitting this for our second shots, third shots, maybe. Some technology in this head that is the same in the draw. So I'm just gonna quickly talk about that without going into too much detail because you can look at this on the manufacturer's website. They have, first of all, this jailbreak head and they now talk about bat wing with this jailbreak head. So it's basically um, adding some stability to the face and they've moved the weighting, these bat wings, they're calling them to the perimeter. So to the furthest point in the heel and the toe. And they're saying it's adding more stability and the face itself, which is an AI face, artificial intelligence, they're saying is a bit springer in the middle. So the mass is effectively more towards the heel and the toe and the face gives a little bit more. That's designed to help us generate more ball speed, more trampoline effect effectively off the club face. So it's got this jailbreak technology they've been using for a little while, which is the frame effectively the face sits against. And as I said, it's pushing the weight to the perimeter the AI face, and they've got this tungsten weight, but with this one, the, the weight with the dry was set a long way back in the head, whereas you will see here with the fairway wood, actually that tungsten weight is a lot more forwards towards the club face. That can help reduce more speed and that can help lower the flight. So they're talking about a lower spin by moving that weight forwards. It's the first time I think they've used tungsten weight actually in their fairway wood and it's 27 grams moved a little bit more forwards in the head. I'm keen to give this a go. I'm gonna be testing these in the same shaft, so the 10 side blue. And uh, these are just a standard length. The one thing here is the normal three wood, which I've got in the max is 15 degree. In the max D, the normal three wood is 16. So you get that one degree more loft with the head. Now in the max, they actually only do a three, five and seven and they're a little bit more lofted. So they're 16 degree, 19 and 22. Um, in the, the max, they give you more options. There's a three, a three HL, a five, a seven wood, a nine wood. So there's more options if you stick into the max. I'm keen to give this a go. And what I'm looking for is more distance as well as that feel and that forgiveness. But they're talking about 10 yards longer. So as a benchmark, I hit my three wood around 235 carry to finish 255 with a run out. So I'm looking for more than that. Behind the golf ball, I think this club looks nice. The weighting of it feels nice. Let's give it a whirl. Off the bat, pretty good. A little left, but not much. And huge distance for me. I'm getting excited by that. That is a 250 carry, 270 finish. It was 26 yards left to target. So let's see if I can get that a little straighter. If you are a player who is overdrawing a golf ball, you may have to look to the LS head, which they're saying sits a little squarer. Um, these ones, the Max, the Max D, definitely the Max D, it's a little bit more draw enhancing. 
So you may have to, if your miss is left of target for a right-handed golfer, you may have to look into that other head. That, it was a low spin, 2,500 spin rate, uh, which is a little on the low side. I'd normally expect to be spinning a fairwood over 3,000. Those kind of numbers would be closer with a driver. But as long as I get enough peak height, let's have a quick peek at it. So I got there a peak height of 29 yards high. So near enough 90 foot and the ball's coming into the ground at 37 degrees. So th the figures there wouldn't worry me. So although it was a low spin, I think there's still enough height there to be able to stop a ball if need be. Obviously, it's not going to land and stop on the green unless it's soft, really soft, but I don't want it running on silly distances where I don't know where it's going to finish in terms of a total. Let's hit a couple with it and then we'll have a little look back through the numbers. And a touch shorter than the last one, but still a 245 carry. That is 10 yards longer through the air than I hit my old one. And I guess I am using some old technology in a fairwood, but I've got actually a couple of fairwoods I use, and they're slightly stronger lofted than this. I've got a 14 and a 14 and a half. This is 15 degree, and I'm hitting it longer. 2,500 spin, got a higher launch angle on that one because it wasn't going left. That one definitely would be able to, to land you know, just short of the green with a little run out there to be able to stop. So not coming in so hot that I can't control it if I was playing into a par five in two. Love the feel of it, do like the look, and this is definitely long. So I've just hit five shots with that. I'm really impressed with the feel. I was, if anything, missing it a little left. Visually, it does look like it aims a touch left to target, which is the only thing that would worry me. Love the sound, love the feel off the head. Still definitely hit that ball out the center of the club. I'm very happy with those strike marks that I can see on the face there. And in terms of the numbers, it was a big claim, that 10 yards longer. And I guess I'm using some slightly older technology, a few years old now, but I'm using it a little left, less loft. And yet I was actually getting more ball speed, more distance with this than I get with mine. I was carrying that as an average 248. I carry mine 235. So we're talking about 13 yards longer through the air, finishing out there at 270. So it's sort of pushing on and challenging my driver. I was getting ball speeds up to 150. Although the spin rate is low at 2000, just under 2300, my launch angle at 13 degrees, my peak height at sort of 31 yards high, so just over 90 foot high, and the ball coming into the ground at 37, 38 degrees is enough to be able to give me the control if I was using this as well into a green. I don't expect to land it and stop it, but as I said, I wouldn't want to land it 10 yards short and see the ball bounce straight through the back of the green. I want to know that I can stop a ball if I need to with this, because it's not just going to be a tee shot club for me. Love the feel of it, very hot off the face, definitely gave me some distance. As I said, the only concern for me personally would be the face looked a little bit left at setup, and, and that might if you're that kind of player and you're a high hitter anyway, that's where you may jump into that LS head. It is obviously worth trying out the different models. And the big thing here is have it custom fitted, take your own one along, compare it to it. I did a driver test very recently, so I'll put a link just here, with the Callaway Rogue ST Woods. And I compared the three heads, so the Max, the Max D and the LS. Uh, and it was the LS that came out on top for me with the driver. My worry with the LS in the fair would be 
that it's designed to produce even less spin. But I think the thing I'd like about it would be that the face would look a little bit squarer to me at setup with my miss being a little left to target. Let's jump into the Max D which is designed obviously to help promote a draw. So for the players who are any more of a fade or slice, this may be the fairway wood for you. So I've now grabbed the Max D, so the draw head version. Now, the one thing I didn't mention when I was actually just hitting the Max that surprises me a little bit in, in this modern day is for the money you're paying for these, they're not adjustable. So a lot of the clubs that you buy at this sort of price, you'd expect to be able to change the loft. These ones are set. Um, now, maybe that's a good thing. I, I meet a lot of amateur golfers who say to me, well, I just want it knowing it's right for me. I don't want to be able to adjust around it. You might find with a better player, they want to be able to tweak it depending on winter to summer or the conditions they're playing in, wind, etc., or the shot they're hitting on the day. Um, but I was very impressed with the Max. I'm interested to hit this Max D. Visually behind the golf ball looks very similar. The only thing is you can see that club face is that little bit more turned in, sitting a touch closed. This is obviously going to suit that player who is hitting pushes, fades, slices. Now, a draw head. If you are a slicer of a golf ball, I mentioned this with a driver of you, but if you are a slicer of the golf ball who's doing it from an out to in golf swing, the draw head isn't going to cause a draw. It could help you square the club face to the path and you would expect to see more of a pull. But that can be a real positive thing. It would go longer, it'd feel better, and it would allow you to then change the path. So you would change the face angle first and then you could encourage the path to be swinging a little bit more in to out. It's always worth looking at the face angle before the path for slices. If you're hitting that slice, from a good swing path, but with an open face, then obviously a heel weighted golf club like this is going to suit. I guess you've got to look, how long is it going to suit for? Am I changing my swing with lessons? So always speak to, if you are having coaching, speak to them first, see what their opinion is of it, of going into this draw head of whether you need it or not. And of course, go and try it and test it compared to the normal max. So, Again, I'm just playing this off a of fairway um, because I know that actually off a tee, if I can hit it off the fairway, I can hit it off a tee. I'd only peg these relatively low. You know, it's a relatively shallow head. What you do get with the LS is a slightly deeper head, a slightly smaller head designed for that lower ball flight. So generally for that, that player of a slightly higher ability. Same shaft I've got in this one. Let's give it a go and, and just see without counteracting too much if it does cause that ball to go a little bit more left of target. Yeah, so off the bat, still felt good, still pretty good distance, but you can see they're missing a little further left. I feel with this, personally, I would almost start compensating, counteracting and opening that face a little bit, which isn't really the purpose of this. So this is obviously going to help that golfer who is missing for a right-hander to the right, left-hander to the left. There was a little bit more spin with that one. Let's hit a couple more and then we'll look through the data compared to the max. Now, having hit both of them there, it kind of did what I thought it was going to do. The Max D compared to the Max, I was actually a little bit quicker in club head, and sorry, in ball speed, only half a mile an hour. Uh, the strike locations, because I can see the ball marks on the face there, were middle. So this was a pretty fair test, I'd say. I hit them both very similar. They both felt very solid, but I hit the max D a little bit shorter than the, the normal max. Now it has got that extra degree aloft. I launched it uh, 0.3 of a degree higher and it was spinning backwards around another sort of 400 revolutions per minute. So closer to 2,700 spin 
on the max D, whereas it was closer to 2,200, 2,300 with the normal max. And that meant I was 243 carry rather than 248. So I was five yards shorter with the max D compared to the max. And it was going a little bit left, to, more left to target. So my average with the max was 16 yards left, whereas it was 24 yards left with the max D. So if you are a lower hitter, if you are someone who is pushing it, fading it, slicing it, the max D is obviously a very well suited head for you. If you are looking for massive distance with a fairway wood and a good all round performance, that max there is definitely going to fill the boots. I was very happy and surprised to see that actually it did live up to its kind of reputation and what they had stated on the Callaway website about it being a long fairway wood. My only concern with that weight forward in the head would be does the player get enough height with it? Obviously go and test it, try it out, go somewhere where you can get some good numbers, ideally with a real ball, not a range ball, to someone you trust for a custom fitting, try the product, get some numbers with it, and make sure you get the right specification for you. Because this isn't adjustable, you need to get it right from the get-go. Although I haven't hit here the LS head, the low spin. That, that club would really be designed for someone who wants to maneuver the ball a little bit more with a smaller head. The head will sit a little squarer, so if your miss was too much of a draw or a hook, that may be the one you go for. You would have to be a really high hitter, low spinner, to be wanting to go into that club. So it's not going to be your mass market but it's definitely worth giving a go if you're a hard hitter and a high hitter as well. Overall, I'm very impressed with them. I like the look, I like the feel. If you're in the market for a new forward and you're looking for a bit more yardage, they're definitely worth giving a go of those heads there. If that review has helped, put some comments below. If you've tried them, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Make sure to check out my driver video on these. I will put a link here, so check that one out. Uh, where I compared all three heads of the Callaway Rogue ST drivers. Well worth checking out, I believe. And my content on the channel is generally tuition based. So please, if you haven't seen them before, hit the subscribe button, check out all my other content, loads of videos on there, at least two instructional videos a week for you.